I went to Russia with the Tabernacle Choir, followed them over, and hadn't been home very long, and was in a gallery one day, and ran into a couple of paintings that caught my eye. Fell madly in love with them, went up to the lady that owned the place and said, I want to buy these paintings, and she said, they're not for sale, and stuck them in a closet. <laughs> so I looked around, there was one other painting that I could tell was by the same artist, and I found the name on it, and went home, and did my sleuthing, called him, and said, Hello, this is Francine Sumner. I'm going to come and meet you. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and I drove down and we talked and became very good friends from then on. The first time I met him, Franny took me down to his house and he gave me props to paint. So Franny took him at first, uh, just a vase. He loved having anything there that he could just set up and go to work with. I told him, I said, you really should be doing <coughs> some Southwest because that's what people were doing then. They were filling their cabins, their houses, and it was very strong. And I took down a bunch of Anasazi things, Navajo rugs, and that type of thing, and just said, here's something to paint, and people will love it because that's what they're doing right now. So It was so detailed. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe anybody could paint that specifically. Most of the paintings that I see are a little more blurred, but his are so detailed. Our neighbors uh, knew him, said with this really cool Russian painter, and they thought that we should meet each other. And so they um, brought him over one day, and we hit it off. He really liked the studio, and he had been painting some uh, North American Indian artifacts, and uh, when he came in and saw all this beadwork, uh, he went kind of berserk. I thought this was the greatest thing ever. And anyway, I've been loaning him stuff ever since. He borrows moccasins and different things and paints them and uh, <laughs> seems pretty happy. The moccasins have a special interest for me because in this subject, we're talking about, again, collision to culture. We're talking about European culture who's brought bits and the Indians who's founded a way, assembled them on the shoes with own design, with own uh, minions, or just decorative purposes. They're all different and they're all unique, uh, not one alike. Because we live in a time when uh, people manufacture millions of uh, cars or TVs, or et cetera, et cetera, everything is the same, or shoes. But this, it's only one. It's only one on the planet that exists and try to capture this uniqueness. And I said, also, it's a unity be between two cultures in one expression. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, larger. <laughs> you know, I think Alexander could paint almost anything, and he's probably been schooled in a very classical style of art in Russia, but he has chosen to uh, pursue the Southwestern artifacts because he has a real love for that heritage. I don't really understand why, you know, being that he's from Russia, other than the fact that both uh, areas are old and historical, but he really seems to be taken with the Native American pieces and it just does an exquisite job in representing them. Yes, I'm from Russia. Uh, yes, so much is connected. But sometimes I look in, in this way. First of all, this uh, Native Americans live uh, the closest people to the nature because they not live in like, houses and uh, automobiles they live in the teepees uh, and uh, everything they feel they feel it on the ground uh, they feel it in the air everything's here present and I live in the countryside of course I not live in a teepee I have a house but still in the countryside when you're close to the nature you're close to the animals you're close to the the trees and the fields and rivers and I feel them close to me most painters of our native culture didn't have the training that Alexander had because it was lost in our schools. It doesn't exist in Russia now. So he's kind of like the last of the greatly trained Russian artists. He is one of Utah's and America's great realists. I think an equal to any still life painter working in this country at this time. Well, what's special about Alexander Solitin? There's a couple of things. First of all, he falls into a category of artist that is very, very difficult to find in um, young American artists today. The very classical, very traditional, formal training is not 
taught very much in today's university students and um, we just don't see it coming out of schools anymore. So that classical training is something that I really appreciate. It's very timeless. The work that we were selling in the early 90s by Sasha early on is um, still extremely beautiful and looks as if it was painted yesterday. And I really appreciate that quality in this work. There's not a trendiness to it. The other element to it that I think is so beautiful is um, his subject matter, the color that he works into his pieces is amazing. It's not very often that artists can communicate with color as effectively as Sasha has. It's something that many artists have to be taught, but he knows intuitively. I saw a piece of his work in a clubhouse at our local country club here, the Entrada Country Club. It was a, um, a very detailed piece of a knife in a scabbard uh, against a back, backdrop of petroglyphs, and, and it was just a stunning piece. And I was so taken with it that I asked everybody around in the club who was the artist, and nobody knew, so I actually took it down off the wall and knelt down in the hallway to find out, get the name of the artist so I could read it. So I tracked him down, took some investigation to track him down, found out where he was, called him, and made an appointment to come meet him. And I think the, it, it was such a stunning piece, the color, that, but more than anything, the detail that he put into this uh, scabbard that held the knife it was beaded and it was just, the colors, the use of colors was beautiful, but the detail of the beads was the thing that caught my attention. The first time that I visited him, you know, with Don, we bought two small pieces. And uh, we chose them because, again, of the detail. One of them was a beaded piece, and the other one is an Anasazi bowl with some, some foliage in it. And his attention to the leaves and the florals is, is really quite incredible. He makes the leaf look like it's, you could touch, reach out and touch it. And he explained to us with his, his beaded work that every bead is individual, that he, you know, it's not just a round ball, it's, it's shaded and it's, you know, cultured so that each one is individual. And so he takes a lot of attention in, in doing a large beaded piece and obviously the effect is, is well worth the effort. I was first introduced to his work in around 2005 and they brought him over and I immediately was in love with his work. And we don't have anything like it in this gallery and since we like to have a really diverse collection it was perfect. And it was Southwest Art and Southwest Art is really popular in this area. I just loved it. The detail, how he captured the Native American artifacts. When we've had Salutin's work available here in the gallery, uh, it usually stops people in their tracks. They may be casually walking through just surveying the gallery and when they come upon one of his paintings, sometimes there's gasps, there's always oohs and ahs. Family members call their spouses over to, to point out the paintings. They're, I guess you'd call it a double take. They definitely uh, get a lot of attention in our gallery. I've been related with art all my life and I have seen and I have been in contact with so many artists, but I have never seen any artist with more dedication and more devotion to art like he has. He spent hours working in his pieces, and sometimes it's one in the morning or two in the morning, and I need to call him and say, you, you need to stop because you have been working here for hours. But for him, it's not a job, it's, it's not a work, it's a pleasure, it's a, it's a passion, it's, it's a way of living. His natural talent, from the moment he was born, he, he brings that with him. And that combination of that school he, he attended in Russia, the teaching, the training he got from there, plus the beauty of this country, that combination of these three things has made his works very uh, enriched and very beautiful.